Okay, so now we're going to use these radicals on things that we don't necessarily need our calculator for because they come out to nice numbers. Uh, and sometimes it's going to be okay to use your calculator, unlike on this first problem, it's going to be okay. But for the most part, I would like you to try to uh, use a sheet of paper. Don't use a calculator at all. Um, and on a test, it will be faster, especially on these ones, to not use a calculator. If you have to use a calculator for these, it will actually slow you down. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, here, we've got the cube root of 216. So it's asking what number times itself, three times, that's what cube root means, equals 216. Well, I don't think most of you just know that the answer is six in your head. Six times itself, three times, is 216. So there needs to be a method to be able to break it down so it's not just a mental problem. And what you do is you take 216 and you're just going to break it down into all its parts. And so just start simple. What times 216? Uh, what is a, fa a factor of 216? And it's even, so I'm going to start with 2. Then I just break it down. Okay, t I divide 216 by 2, that's 108. Well, I can break down 108. 108 is 2 times 54. Well, 54 is 6 times 9. 6 is 2 times 3, and 9 is 3 times 3. And so once I've broken this down all into its prime factorization tree, you've seen this before. I know you've done this. If I look at it, this is 2 times itself 3 times, 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 cubed, right? 2 times itself 3 times, and 3 times itself 3 times. Well, if I'm taking, if I'm asking what's the cube root, or in other words, what number times itself 3 times equals this number, well, 2 times itself 3 times, and 3 times itself 3 times is this number. So the cube root would just cancel those threes, that threes out because, again, the question is, what times itself three times? In other words, I could write this as two times three to the third, okay? Two times three to the third is the same as this, and that would be the same as six to the third. Let me write it over here. So it's 216 is 6 to the third power, or 6 times itself, 3 times. So my answer, and sorry that I squared this, but my answer is 6. 6 is the number that if you multiply it by itself 3 times. Now you could do this really complicated process of splitting it all down. But I'm okay in, in cases such as this one with you using your calculator. There's going to be cases later, especially in the next section, where if you put it in your calculator, you get some weird decimal, and it won't be the answer I want. But for today, that's okay. It's okay to use your calculator for today's lesson. Okay. Let's move on to ones with letters in them. Here I have the square root of x squared. Now the first thing I want you to understand, the cube root says what number times itself three times is equal to this number. So we put a three there. On the square root, we don't put a number right there. The number that is assumed that is there is 2. What number times itself twice? Okay, so if I were to write a number, it would be 2, but that's never written because it's assumed on the square root. Well, the square root of x squared, what thing times itself twice, what thing squared equals x squared? Hopefully you can uh, answer with me that, yeah, that's x. If I square x and then take the square root, I'm back to where I started. They're kind of, uh, they do the opposite process, right? Say 4 squared is 16. Take the square root of 16, you're back to 4. Same idea here. But I need to be really careful on this one. What if x was negative 4? Well, <coughs> negative 4 for x, negative 4 squared, negative 4 times negative 4, is 16. So I would have on this side the square root of 16. Well, the square root of 16 is 4, but f wait a second. That is not true. 4 doesn't equal negative 4. So I need to be careful on what are called even roots. I'll see this in a moment. The square root of x squared doesn't equal x. It only equals the absolute value of x, meaning when I take a square root, I don't get a negative answer. Okay, the square root of 25 is 5, not negative 5. And so anytime I take an even root, square root, a fourth root, a sixth root, an eighth root, I have to put an absolute value sign around the answer 
well, that comes from inside. We'll, we'll see that in just, uh, in just a moment here. Okay? All right. Now, so looking at the next one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cube root of the number. The number here is negative 125. The cube root of that is negative 5. And just like this one, the x squared, take the square root. If you thought that number was 2, really what I did was 2 divided by 2. And now here I'm going to go 6 divided by 3. It's division of the power divided by the outside. So this is x squared. I don't need absolute value in this case because it was an odd root. Here's an even root. The fourth root of 16, I'm doing this quickly, is 2. p to the eighth divided by 4 is p squared. q fourth divided by 4 is q. And because it's an even root, my answer needs this. Now, later on in class, I'll give you uh, the alternative to this that the, the, the book will write. But for right now, just put the absolute value around everything. That's totally correct. This one right here, I cannot take the square root of a negative. No number times itself equals negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, not negative 4. So this one is not possible. Can't take the even root of a negative until section 5.9, but we'll, we'll get there later. And then the last one is 4 times this. So I still have 4 times the square root, and this is the square root of fraction, so I just do the square root of the top, square root of the bottom. And I'm trying to move quickly. I want you to be able to move quickly through these problems. Square root of 25 is 5, so that's the top of my fraction, still has a 5. The bottom of my fraction is y to the fourth, take the square root of that. Again, that's like dividing by the power by 2, y squared. And x squared, take the square root, is x. Now I need to be careful here because it was a uh, square root. I have to have an absolute value. Now, in this case, I want you to simplify a little bit more. 4 is, uh, it's positive 4. If I multiply it to the inside, it doesn't really change anything because it's already positive. I hope that makes sense. If I put it inside the absolute value rather than outside, that's okay because it's positive, and absolute values make it positive, and it's also 4 over 1. So 4 times the top, 1 times the bottom, gives me the absolute value of 20x over y squared. Okay, And so here are all my answers. This one is 6, absolute value of x, negative 5x squared, the absolute value here. This one is not possible, and there's my last answer. Okay, I just went through these extremely quickly. But um, once you get it, it will be a very fast problem for you.